killing it with the American flag. Make America great. Keep America great. Make America great again. Make America great again. This is Power Can. So make America great again. Start this puppy roll. What's up, everybody? It's Dennis here with uh, Truth for the People. I got my brother Narciss with me. Um, real quick before we start, I want to let everybody know, please, whatever platforms you guys are on, if there is a rating <clears throat> or review section, go ahead and just rate, leave a little review if you want to, but like rate, rate it or like the podcast or um, share it in some way. It really helps us grow and really helps us um, reach more people. Also, um, on we, we are now on YouTube. I do have video going, and um, we're const- I'm constantly trying to improve that. But ultimately, if you guys do um, listen to it on YouTube or watch on YouTube, please uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel so that you guys can be updated with new episodes that come out. Also on the listening platforms, um, you know, subscribe or follow on there as well, just so that you guys get notified every time um, new episodes come out. And then um, that's 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 basically it. If you guys also want to support us in some way financially, so that uh, we can keep improving our, um, we won't say no. Yeah, we won't say no. There's mm-hmm. you can go to anchor.fm forward slash f uh t f t p that again that's anchor dot f m forward slash t f t p which stands for truth for the people and on that's basically the podcast website over there there's uh sections where you can um you know give a one time donation or do like a a monthly support so to speak just to help us um you know, grow, improve, and become millionaires. Yeah, that's that's not happening. We but. would not mind that. <laughs> just saying. Yeah, I mean, who who wouldn't mind that? Right. No, but we just want to reach more people. Um, a small loan of a million dollars would go a long way. Would go a long way, you know. <laughs> yeah, we encourage the million dollar donations. Just, right. Just so you guys know. But yeah, we got uh, Narciss, my brother, on this time. Just me and you, Alex, is oh, at work. At work. Or in K- Kansas slaving. City. Slaving. Slaving away. Pharaoh has him. Either way, he was saying he didn't want to, he was thinking of not doing the co-hosting. Yeah, but I think. I think he'll 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 eventually I was telling take Luck, to it. I was telling Luck, too. I was like, uh, okay, maybe he won't co-host, but he'll be on every other episode, you know? Like every second or third or whenever you call him, he'll come. Oh, yeah. He enjoys it. He I likes so. it. He's he good. He's it. good for it too. Yeah. Like he would. He, I'm sure he would have came today too. He yeah, I, I, I uh, actually talked to him yesterday, and he's like, "Oh, I wanted to be there, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah." He said he w- he said he probably would have came if he was here, but he said next time. That's sick. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think uh, he'll come around eventually. Yeah. Well, I know one of our cousins from Canada. I don't know if he wants to be named or not. Lousy. No, someone else uh, said that he's going to talk to him. And by the time he's done talking to him, I Alex think, is going to beg to be on the podcast. I think I might know who you're talking about. Yeah, you probably do. Well, well quick shout out to Lawsy because he, he hit me up this week. He's yeah. Like, Yo, keep going, bro. Keep going on the podcast. Uh, keep the episodes pumping and uh, give me a shout out. You know, I was like, all right, I'll give you a shout out. Yeah, shout, so out, shout out to Lawsy. Shout bro. out to Lawsy. Appreciate uh, Next time you want a shout out, um, please contact me as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, hit him up too, bro. Like, come on. What the heck? You just <laughs> hitting one of us up and not the other? So this is the fourth episode, right? Yeah. And uh, this is the second time you're on, you, it's just you with someone else. Yeah. Do you think that's tougher or no? No. Um, Depends who it is probably, huh? Yeah, prob- I think it would depend more of, on who it is. Um, is. I haven't had any difficulty, so to speak, one-on-one <laughs> with jonathan just because he's pretty easy to talk to but and you guys are buds yeah if it was someone that you well either way even if you don't have some sort of relationship with a person you can still have a good conversation but if the other person you have on 
doesn't have a good like can't like hold he, a good yeah, conversation or doesn't have anything really to say then yeah it's going to be difficult i was just going to say that like you need to have a good conversationalist you know yeah it's like it's like uh you know just meeting new people you know especially like remember in your youth or not that you're not in your youth but when you were single and mingling yeah. and meeting other people from other places you go to a new a new city you meet people at a, at a church or something and then the, there's just people where it's like I'm carrying all of the conversation and it's like a burden yeah. and you're like, okay, how do I get out of here now? It's yeah. like this, this person's just too hard to yeah. talk to, you know? No, for sure. So there's like just some people, people are like that. that. Other people probably just don't want to talk. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, there's quite people. There's like, I guess depends how you're feeling too. I guess you consider them introverts. Yeah. People who aren't as outgoing. I think I'm uh, like an easy to talk to guy. You too. For sure. I know we've kind of, I've, I've, I'm definitely an extrovert and uh, I've been going to a men's group at church and just kind of meeting some of the guys and just talking about our ourselves and our marriages and whatnot. I've learned more about introverts. Um, even though I've learned that my wife's an introvert, I never really understood. I never <laughs> understood the introvert extrovert thing. Yeah. Well, even, very well even until, you and me, I, I would say as extroverts, we're not hundred percent extrovert. We have, you know, yeah, I mean, there's like a percentage that you're extrovert and like there's part a, of you. There's a spectrum. Spectrum, <laughs> gender spectrum. <laughs> well, no, there, uh, there's definitely a spectrum of introvert, extrovert. Yeah, for sure. And it's interesting that um, most of the time, you you see mainly one of these three, and then the odd time, there's the fourth one. But that one's very odd. You see couples that are either the guys an extrovert, the woman's an ex introvert or the other way around where the woman's an extrovert and the guy's an introvert. Mm -hmm. So those are pretty common where one's one, one's the other. Opposites. And then another one that's like the next, the second most common is where they're both extroverts. But not both introverts. But it's super rare where they're both introverts. Which, correct? And that makes sense. Yeah. Because how are you going to like two people that have a hard time talking to each, talking in general yeah. to people how are they going to connect and meet and even, you know, start a relationship like, like way too shy. They're, I mean, if you're an introvert, doesn't mean you're shy. Right. It doesn't necessarily mean you're right. Shy. You're just quiet. You kind of want to keep to yeah, yourself. But that's interesting. Yeah. You're more, you're a little bit more in your head versus yeah. out to everyone else. Yeah. I think it just depends, I guess, on, on who you have on. Yeah. If you're doing it just you and another person, you know? Yeah. And that's why, um, just consulting with a few others, um, we just came to the realization to, and to be honest, from the beginning, I, I had this idea of having a co-host or a few co-hosts where, you know, some people might see something from a different angle that yeah. I missed or that you and I missed. And so the third guy caught yeah. it or something and just something interesting. And sometimes like, let's say even between me and you as brothers, you know, who we're very comfortable around each other. We talk, we grew up together. Um, there's a possibility. I mean, I'm not saying there's always a possibility that like the conversation exhausted itself and you're just, you're done, you know, like, yeah. what are you going to say? Yeah. <laughs> Especially on a podcast, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, okay. Especially when you're like you pushing know? it. Yeah. Oh, and that's what, I, that's what I would kind of mention even before we started. Right. I'm like, Hey, it's only us two. Mm -hmm. We got to be raw, dude. <laughs> like, sure. like obviously maybe we want to hit on some certain topics but you can't force it. Like I said, and you said too, like, hey, when we start, we just start talking. That's it. Like, yeah. You just got to have a raw conversation. And well, that's what's attractive. People. I think that is, man. It's honestly. authentic. And people want authenticity. Sometimes it's not like the most interesting topics or conversations, but I think it's just interesting sitting and talking, at least if it has some depth to a conversation. Yeah. It has to be generally like, interesting to you yeah to have some sort of substance yeah in it. some substance but just hearing people's conversations is is pretty interesting i think like oh yeah like even what we spoke up until now it wasn't anything like whoa but like if i would if i were to hear this on the radio or like just like i'm driving my car yeah mm -hmm. like because i was actually even listening to the radio on the way here you know yeah like some news or something and Obviously, the radio is like more produced. It's very like 
it's very like uh like this subject it's like politics or this or specific questions and the other person responds or you know yeah but sometimes it's, it kind of just seems like they're just having a normal conversation obviously on that certain subject and it's not like for me necessarily sometimes it's may, maybe not the most interesting subject but i'll listen to it. i'm like oh okay that's interesting because they'll, they'll add stuff and you'll pick something up like maybe some news that you didn't hear or something you know mm -hmm. yeah yeah no for sure but just that raw that raw people people want authenticity it doesn't matter yeah. where they're really getting it from Although some obviously you prefer video or you prefer just audio or, yeah. or whatnot, but we're authentic. Here, ultimately, bro. we want authenticity, At least. and that's something Joe Rogan mentions too. Like people can sense even if it's just audio in their car, they can sense when it's authentic versus when it's like produced or forced. Dude, I was just about to mention that. Like, actually, I was thinking about that. Like when you were setting up and stuff, I was like, just thinking in my mind, like if you try to force like say a podcast or radio or you try to force something people can they, they get that vibe you know they like sense it you know what i'm saying yeah. little uh little technical difficulty here a little break had to adjust the camera sorry to everybody yeah i realized that i didn't uh adjust the focus on the camera oh was it not zoomed in enough or just it was zoomed in, it just was a little blurry. Oh, okay. At least it seemed like it to me. Mm -hmm. Um But yeah, I was saying uh exactly what you said. Like I was thinking that. Yeah. People you just sense it, you know. I don't know how. It's the human soul or something that, that senses it. Yeah, it's almost like a sixth sense, so to speak. Yeah. You can just kind of sense when someone's authentic or when they're being a fake. Perfect example of that are uh Great president Donald Trump. He oh, was there. he was on a uh, he, he was taken on to a show which a lot of you I'm sure know what show I'm talking about. The Ali G show. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. And what's crazy is that he was the only one who caught on that Ali G the the whole Ali G show thing and the was, interview and stuff was yeah that was a fraud. He's like this guy's a fraud. He caught it within like thirty seconds. Yeah, like, he was and he got up and left like, like right yeah. at the beginning. It was really quick. Yeah, because this one guy interviewed him at the White House. I forget what his he's from some sports. Oh yeah, um, that's who. Yeah, that's who brought that's it up. The, yeah, uh, that's the guy who who asked him. Dave Portnoy. Yeah, yeah, from Barstool Sports. So, yeah, Barstool Sports. So. He asked him that question. He's like, man, Trump's like, no one has ever asked me that question, you know? Yeah. He's like, I like that question. <laughs> I don't know, man. That's that's kind of crazy, though, eh? Yeah. Like, you got to have some social, some high social IQ, like, yeah. to... Because it seems so legit sometimes. Everyone you know? fell for that. And, yeah. like, the Ali G show was pr basically a pretty big production. Yeah. yeah. And there was a whole... It was done at a, I think it was like done at a studio. There was a whole like, he went to like a studio. I That's think it was crazy. like a BBC or whatever mm -hmm. big production company. And so like they make, obviously it feels legit. Yeah. And you go there and everyone fell for it. Even like, uh, weren't there like a congressman and stuff too? Oh and, yeah. yeah. Or who's that one, um, Christian guy who has the theory that, before Noah's flood, it was ice around the outside. Oh, uh, Keith Kent Hoven. Kent Hoven. He fell for it too. He was arguing oh, yeah, with Ali yeah. G. I remember. I remember it. watching that too. Yeah, I yeah. remember seeing that. Like so many people. Wow. And it's not to say that those people, you know, are dumb. Yeah, are dumb or can't understand this stuff. But, but it's, it's just, to say that Trump is. People call him genius. Some people. Right, and I'm sure maybe you know? some of those people felt it too to a certain yeah. degree, but were like, but they just didn't. I'm not going to be disrespectful and yeah, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm or, sure maybe they got like a sense. Yeah. Or maybe hey, they this just is felt off. weird. This is like, off. I'm being recorded. Yeah. This but, is off. This guy's just like, but Trump's like, I don't care. This guy's a fraud. Wow, I'm out of here. He's like how the Romanians say, dintro bucata, you know, from one, like how you say it in, in English, like that wouldn't make sense from one piece. It's like, you're a strong, you're a stand up guy. You're strong. Like, yeah. Like a backbone person. Backbone. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Uh, 
what it is, you're going to, you're going to stand up, you're going to stand up for yourself or whatever you believe in or whatever, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, interesting that, well, you brought up Trump. I don't know if you saw the video. I just, I, a couple of people sent it to me and, uh, even like some older people too sent it to me. And, uh, he was like talking at some rally and he's like, man, he's like, we need, we need the help of, of the boss. And he points up, you know, we need mm -hmm. the boss, we need his help. And then he also said like, uh, you know, someone, someone told me that you're the most famous person on earth. And I was like, no, I'm not. And he's like, yeah, you're the most famous person on earth. He's like, no, I'm not. And then the guy said, well, who's the most famous person then? And Trump's like, Jesus Christ is the most famous person, <laughs> you know? And the crowd g goes wild. That's sick. But I was like, dang, man, you would never hear that. Well, nowadays that's from uh, Bush. Yeah. Who was a conservative Christian, uh, quote unquote, you know, president. Yeah. I mean, hearing that these days from that's just crazy. people in general yeah. can kind of be shocking, let and alone from a, president? a leader of a leader of any country and let alone the leader of the most powerful country in the right. world, America. The most powerful leader out there. Yeah. Who's recognizing yeah. God. And he's like, we need his help. Yeah. He's like, I'm, I might be criticized. They're going to say this. Why did he say that? The media, you know, he was talking about the media. Mm -hmm. He's like, I don't care. I'm not going to take my chances. He's like, we need him. Yeah. I was like, wow, that's crazy. Yeah, man. Yeah. Talking about uh, Trump. Actually, like I said, I was listening to the radio. And uh, actually before that, I wanted to mention something about Ivanka. I don't, I don't know if you saw this or Ivanka Trump. She like retweeted. She retweet, retweeted like Hunter Biden's tweet or something like that. Mm -hmm. Something about Hunter, some Hunter Biden tweet. I forget exactly what. She was actually... Uh, I don't know if that tweet was taken. I think that tweet was taken down. What are you doing there? I'm just preparing this stuff. Oh. Uh, her tweet was taken down, you know? Yeah. So it's like right now I was listening to the radio too. And uh, they, these guys were, you know, talking about how Congress or the Senate wants to like bring in Jack Dorsey, the Twitter people and yeah. And it kind of subpoena them and like bring yeah. them in and, and, and question, question them and stuff. And the guy was saying like under Trump, you're going to have that happen. Oh yeah. Like that's going to happen. Like, cause you know, th this whole like tech thing is new. Yeah. All these social media platforms are new. Like, they were let free reign, like complete freedom, operate how you want. It's new, you know, after so many years and we're seeing so much political interference now too by Twitter, for example. And I said, Ivanka Trump retweeted Hunter Biden and it was taken down yeah. because it was like some, I guess it was some, um, a negative thing for Biden or something, yeah. you know, because maybe Hunter tweeted something stupid. I don't know. Anyways, he was a druggie. Yeah, I mean, he's a lot of things. <laughs> um, you won't have that under Biden. No, it, these big tech companies are gonna reign free, bro. Well, this just this just kind of clicked That's in my head. Crazy, just as you were talking. Corporations in the past, or l let's go pre-tax, pre-income tax era. Nobody paid income tax. So right? that was before World War One. Before World War One, right? Nobody had nobody, wow. nobody paid income tax. What a time to live, bro! Right? That'd be that'd be sick if we yeah. go back to that. Yeah. Even though originally it was promised it would go away, the income tax. Yeah, obviously it was, they it was. never took it away. But it's kind of hard to operate now though with, without it. But right, continue. But then they introduced the income tax, and what people, what the crazy left cries a lot about is the fact that these large corporations and these 1% elites don't pay their fair share of taxes, right? Just as you were talking, I connected that to these big corporations like 
these tech companies, Facebook, Google, Twitter, Amazon, even who have no restriction on them because this is all new. We're, we're still learning right. how it affects society and all that. And we're realizing that it's affecting society in a very unbalanced way. Yeah. So much bias. And it, I'm against monitoring and con- not necessarily controlling, but trying to tell more companies. more libertarian. Yeah. It, yeah. I'm like, against telling companies what they can and can't do. Let businesses kind of run. Let businesses be businesses. Yeah. But when it comes to the social media sites, I start to understand them more as a public utility. Yeah. Like everyone needs water. Yeah. For their house. Everyone needs electricity. Everyone needs trash. Whatever. Well, the thing is, is that we don't, we don't pay for it. I mean, we pay for our utilities, but we don't pay for the social media. These advertising agencies pay for the social media. Right. So yeah. technically we don't pay for it, but we're all using it. Yeah. And so everyone should have equal rights, even if they're talking hate speech. Yeah. Which is not unconstitutional. Yeah. Should be allowed to say that. Well, right now the social media platforms, even if they're dropping false information, they should yes. be allowed to do it. Right. And let the people decide what they want to believe. Yeah. Let the people figure out, Hey, is this true or not? Okay, fine. Put up, you know, links to fact checking and yeah. let the people decide sure. if they even trust that fact checking sure. site. Sure, sure. Because a lot of that fact checking site will skew a certain thing and make it sound a certain way where is, something that's is that true site, is false yeah. or something that's false is, is true. Is that site leaning left or right, you know? Yeah. They're gonna but um the moment they brought up this whole like fact checking websites, that's the first thing my mind went to is it's just gonna be some like liberal left leaning people running a yeah. fact checking site and they're going to tell you that hey this is true and this is false based on what they want you to believe yeah well with the social media platforms it depend um right now they're running i I, I don't know I've, i just heard it like during some senate hearings and stuff i don't know exactly what it's called but they're operating within like uh kind of as a public forum type type of business. I, I don't know exactly what it is. The social media the sites? So, yeah, like Twitter and, and So originally, and originally they were supposed to be operating as a publishing company. So they'd be treated right. as news. Right, 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 right. Yeah. But they decided that they're not a publishing company, that they're actually something called a platform. Okay. Yeah, this is what it is, what you're, what you're describing. So if they were like how they're operating now, they're not allowed to censor like and, and to skew things political p- politically you know like you can't have political interference whereas if you're like i guess a publishing company you can kind of do whatever you want yeah. you can lean as far left or right as you want yeah you know you can be as biased as you want so that's <laughs> where the battle is now with that you know cuz they're claiming that they're a platform, free speech. Everyone has, you know, everyone can can yeah. can use the platform as as and say what they want. But they're, that's not how they're actually operating. They're just saying they're operating like that. But the amount of pol- political interference is insane. Oh yeah, like it's crazy. On the radio, I was listening. Uh, they were talking, and they were saying that it's maybe almost only happening to conservatives that they're getting uh shut down and banned and and silenced on these platforms yeah very rarely is there you know left-leaning liberal that's not for sure and i haven't to be honest haven't even heard of any of them yeah on the liberal side i know like ted ted cruz came out with lindsey graham saying that there was subpoena subpoenaing jack dorsey yeah and these other guys along with josh hawley Josh Hawley's a baller. By the way, shout out to Josh Hawley. I'm sure he's probably not listening. But no, he's not. But he's, he is a senator from because, Missouri. Because he's a Missouri senator and because he's doing work yeah. up in D.C. I, I didn't know much about him when I first heard about him. He's and when solid. I first heard about him was when I was studying for my naturalization to become yeah. a U.S. citizen. Yeah. That's when I first like learned about who's your senator and I yeah. had to look it up. He's a young guy. But after I heard about, like looked him up, heard about it, 
this COVID stuff started to piss me off with the masks. And I forget what else it was. Any- no, it was so it was something to do with the SBA loans because I have a business. Okay. And so I had to do something with the $10,000 grant. According to the law, every small business was supposed to receive $10,000 regardless of just 10000 for the first however much I think they had like 100 or $300 million accorded, like uh, assigned to that. Mm-hmm. But the SBA decided, that SBA administration decided to do just 1000 per employee up to 10000 and so a lot of people got pissed, and they're like, write to your senator, let them know. And so I mess- I sent a, a Did little- Did you actually pro- send him a I th- message? I think I um, I didn't like direct message him or something. I sent, uh, I put out a tweet on Twitter, I believe, where I um, tagged him you in You tagged it. him? Him and the other guy, Roy Blunt. Roy Blunt, yeah, Roy Blunt. I tagged them both in it. I'm like- you know, look into this. The law says X, Y, Z. The SBA is not doing it according to the law. So then that was my, not even an interaction with him. It was just like trying yeah, to get his hey, attention. Hey, to I'm here, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but ever since then, I've learned he's just been doing work. Man. He's he's like a national voice and national figure now, almost. Yeah, he's he's become Which, a pretty uh, big deal. There's, a, you know, not and obviously not every senator gets national attention like that. Like Ted Cruz is definitely in the national spotlight. There's like there's certain senators that are up yeah, there, you know. Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham. Obviously Pelosi. These, Pelosi. <laughs> uh, Pelosi's actually the uh, speaker of the house, but what's, yeah. what's what's that guy? Schumer, Chuck Schumer. Mm-hmm. Um, Adam Schiff. I was gonna say something yeah. else. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I, I I don't speak like that. But. Um, yeah, this guy has gotten. I think, I think he just was voted in last, last. Yeah. Uh, so he's, he's relatively he's new. He's pretty fresh, but he's, he's strong. Yeah, he, he's a he's strong. He's been senator. in politics for a little bit because he for was sure. like attorney general for, for a little sure. bit for Missouri, I think. So he, yeah, he's he 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 has. I was actually just watching yesterday or the day before. Um, him like w- with these uh, Amy Coney Barrett. Mm-hmm. Amy hearings, yeah, yeah, Amy Coney hearings, Barrett. and I heard like the, you know, when he had the floor and he was uh, talking, and he's strong, dude. Oh yeah, he he's got like a he's he's smart, he's good on his feet, he's very articulate. He's uh, I mean he I mean again he rose to the national you know, to the national spotlight, and, like you know, pretty prominent member in the Senate from what I see. You know, which is yeah. nice for Missouri, you know. Oh yeah. <laughs> he's one of us. Oh yeah. So you know what he's also done, which I love that he's he's taken this on. Um he's decided to investigate um what is it? Child abuse allegations in the Catholic Church. Oh really? Here in America. I I didn't hear about that. I mean I yeah, I didn't hear about that. I heard something about that. It it being like th- a thousand something cases got brought up to his attention or something. Really? So he de- he decided and he vowed that he would investigate every single case. I think he's very, Im- including here in St. Louis. He's new. He's ambitious. He wants to get stuff done. He wants to do something. And he's a lawyer as his, yeah. you know, a degree, lot of, degrees uh, a lot of Congress, school. Congress people tend to be lawyers. Yeah. But yeah, that's awesome, man. That's, that's good to see someone. They want to get something done and they want to get something good done, you know? Yeah. With these uh sadly there's not too much of that going yeah on. like a lot of bantering and yeah yeah maybe we'll do this uh political rhetoric you know yeah but you mentioned uh the, the kid thing actually uh, again i heard this on the radio some school i think it was in virginia or something northeast there was some school uh they they let the kids off like one day a week or something like that to go protest what yeah seriously yeah like it, it, for climate change that was it it was for cl- like the protest climate change that's irritating that for they people, use you know, children for political reasons political poems, it's you know. so annoying yeah, yeah. I they hate indoctrinate that. Even, them and i even mean even like the greta thornburg thing she's a she's she's just a pawn yeah she's being they used. don't care about her no they care that, and then she has a speech. You robbed me of my childhood, you know, with her accent and her angry mug face and stuff. I was I like, wonder, "Relax, kid, go to school." I wonder how long she mem- she sat there memorizing the lines. Yeah, <laughs> like, go to school, <laughs> go and live life. 
Yeah. The world's not going to end because of climate change. It's going to end because of something else. Yeah. You know, but, uh, and, and these guys on the radio are saying, I wonder if they would let them go protest for something like pro-life or something. Oh, you'd never see that. Oh, heck no. You know, it's only, you know, climate change or yeah. some racial inequality thing that doesn't exist uh, at least on, on a mass scale. Left you know? agenda. Yeah. The kid thing, man. The kids are used, sadly. Yeah, you know? it's very sad. It They start... Even I with mean, the school shootings and stuff, there was those few kids that ended up being like used as... Proponents uh, of gun control. Yeah, of gun control. And Down in Florida, and stuff. right? Yeah, in Florida. So it's like... Yeah. Let the kids live their lives, man. Yeah, that's... In my opinion, like one... It's one step down from kids being used for, you know, tra uh, sex trafficking. Like, using them for your own po political gains. Yeah. Is like a step down from that because they're they're being used in both cases, but one's obviously being used, and they're both just as bad because like or, the kid has no choice in either one. They're just listening to something. I mean, who's I wouldn't say just that. as bad, obviously, because not just as bad. I'm saying it's like a step yeah, down, like yeah, one yeah, step yeah. away from that. Like yeah. th the kid has no choice. They're, I mean. I'm sure they're, they're like, would you like to? And they'll keep insisting until, until well, the kids are like, fine. Oh, they'll, well, or they, they'll find that one kid that'll yeah. listen to what well, they want them to do. You said they have no choice. Yes and no. They don't have a choice in the sense that they're tricked into it. Right. Because even, right. even with sex point. trafficking, um, kids are like, because, you know, with this whole Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell or whatever, mm -hmm. um, she would go hunting out for girls, young yeah. girls. Yeah. And obviously charm the, the, you know, the kids, the girls up and, you know, 12, 13, 14 year old girls, charm them up. Yeah. And they'd go with them. Yeah. You know, because they trick them, they charm them, you make money, you'll, you'll go see the world, you'll this, 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 you're going to, or whatever they, you know, whatever lies they sold to them. Next thing you know, you're, you're forced as a 14 year old girl to go and, uh, spend some time with, uh, with Uncle Joe. With Uncle Joe. <laughs> 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 uh, I'm and sorry, he's gonna I, sniff you up. That was a perfect. Oh, uh, that was a good one. That was a perfect one because sniff your hair and there a is a lot of other things. What's funny is that mentioning Uncle Joe is that sleepy Joe. Yeah, or it's definitely not uncle. Yeah. Um, well, he's that creepy uncle. He's you that, know? Yeah, whoever has creepy uncles, that's uh, what Joe is. It, there's actually a um, child pedophilia specialist. I, I'm not sure exactly. I I could look it up. Um, this guy who's like, who's hunted down pedophilia or, or pedophiles, so okay. to speak. Um and he has like some journalist or something or what? I, no, I think he was like an actual investigator. Okay, so he was like a legit, like a per person who knows what he's looking at. Okay, and um, he would go. He went through a list of the things that are like red flags, and compared them to like what Joe Biden does with these and kids. A lot of and similarities. There's there. so many similarities, like, like sniffing, coming up behind girls, grabbing their shoulders, giving them a little massage. Yeah, so and we're talking about one, young girls one of here. The, one of the things was physical touch in front of other adults, especially the child's parents. Wow, because that's subconscious, what, isn't it? Yeah, because it makes the child, the child. If you notice in some of the videos, the child will look to their parents when Joe Biden's doing that. Okay, and the parents, if they see it, don't do anything about it or ignore it. Or they don't might just see think it. it's like, oh, it's just a uh, so whatever. The child's looking to the parent saying, what is going on? Is this normal? Okay. Even if it's subconsciously, maybe the child's not right. thinking that exactly. A lot of but this is probably subconscious. He's looking, they're looking, or she's looking at their parents. Mm -hmm. Is this normal? The parent doesn't say anything out of maybe respect for Joe Biden or because obviously they're supporters there. It's not going to be like right. a Trump rally at a Joe Biden meeting. Yeah. Um, out of respect for him or they are like, oh, he's just being, you know, the good old grandpa that he is or he's whatever. being a nice little old guy. 
And so that makes the child understand that that's normal. That's fine. Yeah. It's normalizing it for the child. It's not and a big it's deal. also normalizing it a bit for the parent to a certain degree because they rationalize it in their brain or they oh, it's just, write it off as, oh, it's just Joe being, you know, a grandpa figure or an that, uncle or wouldn't whatever. That, and, and that probably also encourages and brings a sense of security for, in this case, let's say Joe, but in terms of the, you know, the pedophile. Like, hey, they just think it's I'm, working. It's working, and hey, they just think I'm just like a nice guy, just yeah, just kind of like being comfortable with yeah. with the family and with everyone around. Like, showing that, uh, you know, I think showing that in front of the parents brings a level of comfort and like um, encouragement to the pedophile. Like, hey, it's working. I- I'm deceiving them in a sense, you know. Right, and they they just think it's uh, whatever, maybe just like a. Yeah, yeah, and maybe I don't know. They're trying to see how far they can kind of push their boundaries, okay. but that that's kind of that was super interesting how that um, investigator like what 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 are some of the things though? Like you said, physical touch. What else? Some of them was physical touch, smelling, especially in front of coming up behind, smelling or what? Like yeah, like, Joe does that a lot. <laughs> like any kind of like you know touching their their waist, shoulders, the waist, different areas, wherever it was. Um, just normalizing that. Um. That was kind of the main thing, or kind of like touching their head. All the it, mm-hmm. it's it, it's a it's a lot of more to touch, and then like whispering things in their ear. Oh yeah, you definitely see that from Joel. Whispering things in their ear, because like, why wouldn't you say it out loud? Yeah, that's weird. What are you trying to say? Yeah, you know, like if wh- you're saying, "Hey, you look, you look, you 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 look cute today. You look good today. Yeah, well, you're a beautiful young girl. Everyone, you know, like he, a nice, decent that, compliment. Yeah, you you say that out in public in yeah. front of everyone. Everyone Absolutely. can hear it. Like, oh, that Why was are you nice, hiding that? That was a nice comment. But you know, he comes up to the ear and he's like, "You look very nice." Yeah, you're like, or it's like, what? Like, what is he trying to say? Like, I'm just come ass- out back just later gonna, or something. I'm just, gonna or what? As- I'm just gonna assume he's saying the nicest things. Right. I'm just. That's all I'm gonna assume. I would assume that too, because <laughs> I mean. That'd be way too crazy if even if he's saying those nice things, like still he's creepy. coming up to my ear yeah, and he's nice. whispering. You can yeah. feel the the, the, the warm breath, breath on warm your breath. ear on your neck. You look very pretty. Yeah, that's creepy. That creeps you out already. Yeah. You're like, why are you doing this? I'm I'm thinking that he's not coming and saying, uh, meet me meet me out back after <laughs> you know when your parents aren't looking. <laughs> I'm I'm assuming that's not being said. Or, Till you can drive. And yeah, I'll pick you up or and come visit my <laughs> office or something. Come yeah. visit my office. <laughs> that well, I don't. I don't know if Biden is. I know. A- either way, this this investigator was saying yeah, that he's that. he is Joe Biden in the videos that he's analyzed is showing just about all the red flags for a pedophile. That's crazy. Yeah. Whenever did he's they, doing those things, did they try to? Um, Shut this guy down somehow, or I don't know. I I was told about this guy from okay. Um, actually, our cousin Brandon, and I can oh, actually, okay. I can look it up and see if I can find it. I mean, yeah, quickly if you can, but not don't take too much time. Um, forgot what I was gonna say. Oh, I was gonna say something about uh, again Epstein and Biden because I know a lot of, I know a lot of uh big cats out there like heavy hitters and, and, and like political figures and and uh actors and stuff you know they were on the flight logs Epstein's flight logs I'm wondering yeah. if Biden has any connection I mean obviously I haven't looked into it but I w- this is where what's his face Lucci would be good yeah, you know I, yeah. He, he before I left he's like oh man I wish I could be there man <laughs> But maybe in a couple of weeks he'll be able to be here. He'll he'll be, he'll be able to, able to do it. Yeah, but I was wondering if uh, by S- sadly I'm using uh, Google to search it. They're obviously not going to show it. Yeah, I mean Duck Duck Go. Yeah, Duck Duck Go or something. Yeah. Have you heard anything on Biden though with uh, with uh, pedophilia and Epstein and all that flight logs and. I know Clinton's obviously big. I haven't heard of Biden. Yeah, I definitely heard of Clinton. Um, obviously, that prince, Prince Andrew. Prince Andrews. Which I think that's 
Mel Gibson. Kind of the big one right now. Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson. No. No, not Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson's actually like really against. Um, what's his name? The guy who played. Uh, The guy who played, now I can't even think of the movie. For some reason, I connect to Russell Bubba Crowe. Shrimp, Bubba Shrimp. Bubba uh, Shrimp. Oh, F- Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump. What's his? Uh, Jim Carrey? No, that's not Jim Carrey. No, I, I'm mixing people. How do I not? Frank? No. I don't know how I'm having this brain fart, dude. This is where we need Lucky. He's a big actor, dude. How do Oh, uh... Tom Tom Hanks. Hanks. Tom Hanks, right. Huh. Yeah, Tom Hanks apparently is uh, was involved big time in that too. Chrissy Teigen. There's a lot of yeah, celebrities, man. Um I think Joe Biden uh Joe Rogan mentioned Tom Hanks on this that he would post very weird, very, yeah. very Instagram weird posts. pictures on his Instagram. Yeah. Like like of a gloves or something. Yeah, a picture on, like a, a, on the ground. Yeah, like a picture of a sock on a playground. And like or something. A weird caption. Yeah. Like really weird stuff. Yeah. And apparently he uh he has citizenship in Greece now. Re- really? Recently, I think. I don't know how recent, but and they actually in Greece they um they like they consider now pedophilia a orientation or like are you serious some prop some like psychological problem where you don't actually get in trouble with it and you need i forget exactly what they consider i think they might they might consider it just like uh like an orientation or something so it's like it's almost okay in greece to to be a pedophile you know and apparently that's, you know, Tom Hanks has his citizenship there now. Yeah, I'm looking on Snopes right yeah, now. Yeah, a disability. Okay. Oh. Okay, no, that's not. Of course, Snopes, not, is, but, Snopes is saying false. Yeah. I don't know if it's a disability, though. But I know they're easier on pedophilia. Hold on. The New York Post. No. Yeah. So, New York okay, Daily look News. at that. The New York Daily News. Greece and uproar over allowing. Go back to that. Over allowing pedophiles kleptomaniac special status, so they're giving them an easy an easy pass almost. Greek disability groups expressed anger Monday at a government decision to expand a list of state recognized disability categori- categories to include pedophilias, exhibitionists, and kleptomaniacs. kleptomaniacs. The National Conf- Confederation of Disabled People called. The action incomprehensible. And Snopes said it's false. <laughs> what the heck? Well, that's why I say you can't take these you, fact checkers. Uh, Snopes, right. you have to understand. Snopes is definitely left leaning. Yeah. Big Who time. are these people? They're trying to hide this stuff, dude. I know. So of course they're gonna you're gonna go fact check. Like you have to fact check the fact checker. Right. It's so annoying. Fact checking doesn't even count right now. You need to fact check fact checkers, and then you, you might you have to fact check yourself, like. Screw the fact checker, dude. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. Like, why would I believe someone fact checking for me? That's that's so dumb. I have to fact check myself, and that means what we just did right now. You open up a browser, DuckDuckGo, preferably, because Google might, you know, filter some stuff out. Yeah. And you check yourself and read up. That's how you fact check. Exactly. You don't go on Snopes. You T- don't go on Snopes. Tim Pool talked about it. He's a um, freelance journalist. Yeah. He was talking He's good. about He's good. fact checking the things yourself, not... Don't relying want to fact on checkers. these so-called fact checkers because that's just you being lazy and whenever whenever you're being lazy whether you're being lazy at work at school that is being lazy dude. or even looking into information yourself whenever you're being lazy which going to fact checking websites is being lazy yeah you're gonna mess up you're gonna fail bro whenever you're lazy you're gonna fail isn't that's that just the, isn't that crazy though we just went on snobs it said false right. and then we pull up an article that there's outcry that the government actually is passed pass this, is said? Yeah. It passed it. Yeah. That they have special status pedophiles. And then you see Tom Hanks. Um, yeah, over allowing. So they did allow it. Right. They State allowed it. Recognizes, yeah. recognized disability categories to include pedophiles, exhibitionists, and kleptomaniacs. That's crazy, man. Yeah. 
and then you go on snow like this is live this is live people like <laughs> you are being deceived every i was thinking about this on the way here there's so much deceivement bro well let's go let's touch on that real there's quick there's so much deceivement in the bible it says that satan is a deceiver he's the king of deceivers he's the father of he's the father yeah. of deception of lies of lies yeah what's happening right now all over the place yeah like a sp- even more so Definitely since Trump took office and even more so since COVID. Yeah. Yeah. Insane more so. Insane amount of deception. Yeah. False Bro. information constantly. Oh, are you going to? And then they're labeling the stuff that's true as false. Yeah. Are you going to let, like, this is, th- th- this is just with like the earthly things, politics, whatever. And then obviously you go into the spiritual aspects, but are you going to let someone actually dick, like dictate what that you can and can't what you see. can and can can't see. Like, are you gonna let someone tell you or, the information, or, or are you gonna seek it? Right. Because man, they're gonna lie straight to the teeth, right in your face. They won't even blink, and uh, you'll think it's true. Yeah. Dude, this whole like even this fact checking thing. I'm just thinking, that's probably set up to deceive people, bro. Yeah, they like don't for want sure. They, they, don't, they don't want, want people doing the research. They want you to be lazy. Just go to fact checker and they'll lie straight th- th- this th- is, through their teeth. L- let me explain you know? to you where my mind is with this. So we just talked about Greece potentially, or according to the article, has accepted as a government that pedophile is a dis- pedophilia is a disability. Yeah. Okay. Tom Hanks got citizenship there, by the way. <clears throat> One more thing to add to the pile. Right. And now let's take a broad look at America. This is what this is the way my mind's working. Now we look at the broad America. America learns that Greece did that. If once America learns that Greece did that, most people in America think it's messed up and they do not want pedophilia Absolutely. to be in any way accepted, even as a disability. Only the, the left leading liberals, like far left. Right. And so, because they're, they're, I think pedophiles. at, I, most Americans would want yeah. to take some sort of a precaution to make sure that that does, that kind of a ruling doesn't end up here. Right. Okay. Now you look at these so-called fact checkers and let's say you post that uh, article on Facebook, Inst- uh, Instagram, Twitter. They'll put that fact checking thing. They'll put that fact checking yeah. thing that Snopes false said it was false. Yeah. Everyone's like, oh, that's false. Oh, they don't even look into it. It's not happening. Yeah. And they move past it and you completely ignore it. And now there's not the sense of, hey, let's make sure that that doesn't happen here. Bro, isn't that one step easier for them to make it happen here? Aren't they? Yeah. Aren't they like. That's how my mind works when I see that. I'm thinking, aren't they training then the masses to like encouraging them to be lazy, to not think for themselves, to not research and just oh, oh, for what, sure. what, what they tell you. That's it for oh, sure. That screen told me it's like this and like this CNN or whatever other bro, you know, news, even Fox news. I mean, Fox news can be wrong too, just because it's conservative. You still have to do your own research. Exactly. You know? Yeah. So it's like, are you going to let that dictate to you the truth or are and, you going to go search for it? And I know people laugh at the whole thing of like, the government brainwashing people or people laugh at the idea of, I know this one producer was talking about why do they call it TV programming? Because they're programming society. Yeah. At, at like fa- face value. When you hear that, yeah, you can laugh at that. Like that sounds but funny. It's actually happening. But if you just went through the whole process that I just talked about with the whole grease thing, you can see it happen live, bro. Yeah, like it just happened live on the that podcast. That is a form of programming society's mind to think, oh, okay, that's not actually happening. So everyone believes these so-called fact checkers. How do you know? Well, the I just wanted the fact. I just want a Snopes. That's how. Oh well, I just watched CNN or Fox or right. How do you know? You oh, just, I just did. You know, programming like society pro, pro, programming society or programming people isn't necessarily that like they flash some special images in your face yes. and that like changes your mentality. It's not like that sci-fi That's, programming type stuff. Right. No. Or it's not like they, de- you know, some crazy some code, robot or some code gets downloaded some, through your, through the screen yeah, into your head. Like it, right. it doesn't work like that. It, it's not like computer programming, you know, it's misinformation yeah. or hiding information from you. Yeah. That's a form of 
programming society. So much deceivement, bro. Like look at back in the Nazi era when, or no, let's yeah. go in today's society Even to that, yeah. North Korea or China where they dictate what's allowed to be seen in the news and what's yeah. not allowed to be seen in the news. Yeah. That is a form of programming their society. Civilians in North Korea think they live in the best country in the world because of what they're told and in the that, news. that the leader is God. And that their leader is a God, yeah. Yeah. That's well, what they believe. Are they brainwashed? Yes. Absolutely, yeah. Are they programmed yeah. by their government? Heck yeah. yeah. Well, e that's e programming. Even not going some special code coming right. through a screen into your eyes. Well, you mentioned the Nazis too. Like, I remember learning about this even in school, and you'll even see it in movies. Like, you had you were a Jew, yeah, in Germany, and you have, you know, German um, neighbors. Well, they, what the Nazi regime and Hitler really did is just program the German people. Like yeah. you, like you were saying, how through through misinformation and through deceit, misinformation and then um, repetitive. I was just other say repetitive that. information, repeating, repeating, repeating until it came truth to them. Like they would repeat information uh, against the Jews that the Jews are bad and evil or whatever it was, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, at like the first time, the first few times, the German, you know, the German neighbor is like resisting that like absolutely not he's a good guy yeah but they just keep saying it and give reasons and reasons that were lies you know yeah and over time it became so ingrained they've yeah that's true this neighbor of his of this jewish person who were you know good buds before turns him in yeah that's yeah. crazy yeah i mean look at that's look, crazy. Look man. at that going on right now he, over here. That, sh that should be lives, raising with uh, Black Lives yeah. Matter. It's becoming, constantly like you have white privilege. And there's Every, white people like actually and, believing it and like hold on, but it's other white people telling white people this. That's what's kind of already the most, been brainwashed. Yeah, there's the odd yeah. there's a couple odd black people in there, but they're just pawns in the game. Bro, a lot of black people don't care. They're not even on board with the whole Black Lives Matter Bro, thing. Bro, they just want to live their lives and, and they, yeah. some of them are in the hood. They're just trying to make it, you know, make it to the next uh, payment and, and, and trying to get out of that situation. Bro, they, they got they got their own problems to worry about, man. For sure. Like, I, I remember watching a video on YouTube about uh, this Black Lives Matter and All Lives Matter. This guy was holding a poster. And... Uh, Actually, that, that's kind of t saying the opposite. He he put an All Lives Matter poster in a black neighborhood and he, like people, these black guys were coming up to him like wanting to beat him up. Mm -hmm. But I saw another video that they uh, they interviewed like some black people, like a lot of black people in a black neighborhood about, I think it was also about Black Lives Matter or it was just about like white privilege and all that stuff. And they're like, no, what are you talking about? I don't, I haven't heard anything about that. I don't believe in that. Oh, yeah, I've seen a lot. Those. Yeah. I've a, seen those. Like a, a lot of black people are like, no, we're, we just, we're just yeah. wanting to live our lives. Yeah. You know, we, we want to live in peace. We want to, yeah, that's but, a majority of black and white and every, every type of people. A majority of people, I think they just want to live their lives in peace. They want to do well. They want to get out of the situation. Yeah, but that they're just, in if it's tough, that's, you know? Okay. So that just shows you that this whole, so it's not a black white programming. Thing. It's a programming. Thing. Yeah, it's not a black white thing, man. I know people laugh at the whole programming thing. Oh, it's absolutely it's true. It's happening. It's just not the way. It's just. It's not the way that people think. Like, oh, it's a computer program. They're coding, you know, yeah, some it, coding language, and they're using the word programming because that's the closest thing to identify what's happening. Yeah, but it's not like a computer program thing. It's about control. That's why. And obvious, and they're, you know, they're programming you to control you. Yeah, to control how you think. You know, and here's and here's another thing. Um, I came across an article back to the whole like withholding information from you. I came. I actually did some research into this. Um. Oh, a little like a while ago, I'd say a few years ago, back when I used to work at the warehouse in Kansas City. Okay. <clears throat> um, there's this. So I'll start off with what was what was what's kind of connected with it is the fact that this 
this whole topic or this whole thing I'm talking about was information that was withheld from the public as a form of misinformation. And it's tied into the pedophilia thing. Okay. There was a documentary made, and I talked to you on the phone a little bit about oh, yeah. it. There was a documentary made about some insane stuff that came out back in like mid nineties, I think, about this whole like pedophilia thing going on with the elites and government officials and certain rich people. <clears throat> Just elites. <clears throat> And there was a documentary made about it, and it was, excuse me, and it was uh, funded by uh, the Discovery okay. Channel. And just as they were getting ready to release it, Discovery Channel pulled all their funding from it. Yeah. And to this day, it the documentary hasn't hasn't aired. Bang. To this day, and I wonder what they found on it, bro. Well, here's the story. I'm going to kind of, I found the article and I'm going to pull it up real quick so that people uh, can see it as well. You can put that on the screen. The Yeah. So everyone can see the screen right now on YouTube. Oh, yeah. So if you're on YouTube, you can see this. So um, the Johnny Gosh, Gosh. Gosh. tragedy. A story of kidnapping, mind control, and pedophilia. Oh, yeah, you told me something about this. Uh, I'm going to scroll down through some of this. If you guys are interested, you can look it up. Um, Johnny Gosh, G-O-S-C-H, I think, is, is how you spell it. Hold on. The Johnny it's not, Gosh It's not strategy. this one. No? It's this one. Okay. The Franklin cover-up scandal. That's the one. Okay. Franklin cover-up scandal. child sex trafficking in Boys Town, Nebraska. Is it still, still happening, happening today? today? Yeah. Question mark. It was written by... John W. DeCamp. He was a senator, I believe. Mm -hmm. But um, here's a little summary of it here. It says, in 1988, the raid and closure of Franklin Federal Credit Union in Omaha, Nebraska, revealed a child sex trafficking ring, mainly boys and later girls from Boys Town, Nebraska. That included prominent members of society and government officials as the perpetrators. The investigation into the credit union and its general manager, Larry King, ended with the arrest and conviction of Larry King for a $40 million fraud. Despite multiple investigations into the credit union, Larry King and, and Boytown, one of the, great, one of the greatest cover-ups was not only successful, but resulted in accusations made and corroborated by several witnesses as nothing more than a hoax, leading to multiple conspiracy theories. A documentary created in 1993 by a film crew from Yorkshire Television in the UK went to Omaha, Nebraska to make a documentary about the alleged pedophile ring. Funding for the film was made by the Discovery Channel in the USA. The documentary was set to air in Ireland and the UK as part of Yorkshire Television broadcast. First Tuesday a U.S. broadcast would follow. The documentary crew claims to have found a vast operation throughout the country, providing children to the wealthy and political establishment for molestation, drug trafficking, and blackmail. A, later, a year later, in 1994, the documentary Conspiracies of Silence was complete and ready to be aired in the U.K., but the Discovery Channel withdrew support and reimbursed Yorkshire Television the half million it cost to make. The documentary remains unaired till this day. Over the years, the documentary has been leaked onto the web. The information in this story is what I gathered from the investigation done by the crew of Yorkshire Television. A book, The Franklin Cover-Up, written by John DeCamp, an attorney with intimate knowledge of the scandal, and other research. What's the, uh, what's it called? Because it said it was leaked here and there. The so that um, documentary is called Conspiracy of Silence. Oh. And there's a link oh, which video. takes you to YouTube. Oh, okay. And it looks like it's on here. Yeah, I'll leave it though. Yeah. For now. But anyway, it, I guess it's on YouTube. If you guys do want to watch it, it's on there. Yo, but I watched an interview with 
John DeCamp talking oh, yeah. about that whole ordeal. Dude. Dude, it's, the it's, most insane stories. It said, uh, getting to some of that uh, right after I uh, mentioned this, it said that it was prominent members of society and the political elite. Um, so this whole Epstein things, Epstein is just, he's very like recent history. Almost, yeah. Because this I, stuff's been going on with the elites, like, and I, I, I always wondered, why do they go to pedophilia? Like, what's, what's the deal with that? Do they get bored of all the I think it has sexual something. pleasure they have because of their power and they need something else? Like, why, what's making them go into that, man? That's, that's kind of a difficult... That's answer, one of the biggest conspiracies answer. of our time. Yeah. It, 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 it's a worldwide pedophile ring. Yeah, I mean, it's, with it's, Epstein. it's definitely not just America. Yeah. It's all over the, the world. But you were saying that some of the stories you heard, I don't know, I don't know if you want yeah, to mention so something. or From what I remember, and it's been a bit, um, I may be wrong, so um, if you care enough to look for it, look into it for yourself, go ahead. Um, you just have to look up John DeCamp and interviews with him. He was talking about finding a, he found this boy over there in Nebraska, I believe that's where the boy's from, um, who had this condition that he can't, like, he, 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 would, he wouldn't be able to lie. He did, Dang. I, I, it's some sort of psychological I heard about condition that. where you just can't lie. Like, yeah. whatever it is, you're always telling the truth. Even yeah. if it, like, causes you to die, you, you, you end up telling the truth. You just can't yeah. lie. Yeah. It's not possible. Just psychologically, yeah. whatever's going on. And he was, he actually got him... Um, looked at by a couple psychologists and they all came to that same conclusion. Mm -hmm. And so he looked, this this boy had written like a journal. His parents had taught him to keep a journal of his daily, you know, daily life, whatever happens in his daily life. And some of the stuff he wrote and drew in that journal were just di so disturbing and disgusting about the things that would happen. He would go, like, I guess the, these officials would come like pick him up and Dang. it's kind of like he was going on trips, like government trips or whatever. And it was a couple kids. So they, they'd pick up like a, a couple kids at a time. Mm -hmm. so it was like these mm -hmm. kids are going on a trip together to like D.C. or something. Yeah. Who knows what they would tell the parents. But they would take these kids and they'd go to, you know, some crazy place. Backwoods cabin or AKA something. AKA probably like Bohemian Grove and some junk, wherever they wherever they meet. And they would make these kids do the most disgusted things, like make them have intercourse with one another, and then like, wow, they would like, you know, kill one of the kids, and then make him oh, have intercourse with. That is crazy. Yeah, this is. It was just it was so disturbing and so sickening just hearing bro what was going on, and and like they would, it was just I it was disgusting. Dude, half the stuff I can't remember because I just like removed it from my mind. It was so pedophilia. Nasty. If it was just pedophilia, even that alone is just even that alone is way. It's like so wrong, absolutely disgusting and wrong. But it's it doesn't stop there. That's the crazy stuff. Yeah, because you know I watched a uh, documentary. I told you about it, and I think you watched part of it or almost all of it. And whoever's uh, uh, listening. I encourage you guys, if you haven't already watched it, go watch Fall of Cabal. Fall of and then Cabal is C-A-B-A-L. On YouTube, there's 10 parts. Uh, they're like 15 to 20 minutes each part or something. But So you can kind of break it down and watch it over a few days or whatever. Anyways, man, I watched that documentary and it shook me, bro. Like, And the person who... who they said they put like countless hours of research into this, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, obviously you, you can research it yourself, but. And that's key. Sorry to interrupt you there. That's key for all you listening. Just as much as we need to and do look into the stuff ourselves to make sure that what we're talking about is real. Like look into this stuff yourself. Yeah. Especially, especially if you don't quote unquote believe it. Like, it's, oh, that's BS. Because it's almost don't, unbelievable, man. Don't just write everything off. Even like Black Lives Matter, for example. Like that's something I had to look into to see, hey, do I support that or do I not support Black Lives Matter? Right. 
everything you do, look into it. So yeah. continue. That's what I was just trying to tell well, them. Make sure you guys do look into this, especially if you because, disagree to any extent. And, and this is the reason too. We're, we're compared to what's out there and what's happening. We're naive. Oh heck yeah, dude. We are more than half the stuff we don't know. We're innocent. Like you know how you look at a kid. And you're like, oh, the kid knows nothing about anything. Like, he's such about an innocent life. kid. Yeah. We're, we don't have three little ones right yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. We're like that in this world. Not we as necessarily Christians, but a lot of people have no idea what Just society going, in general. The evils that go on behind oh, yeah. closed doors and underneath, you know, the fabrics of society that you just see on a, you know, general mass level on social media, on the news. The things that go on are just like, they boggle your mind. So anyways, I encourage you guys to watch Fall of Cabal. It's going to blow your mind away. And it's not just pedophilia, bro. It's like child sacrifices. Yeah. It's drinking their blood. You know what Mel Gibson said? And mm -hmm. Mel Gibson said this like over a decade ago, because there was a period in Mel Gibson's career where he wasn't shooting any movies or, you know, mm -hmm. really involved in Hollywood at all because he was kind of uh, exiled, you could say, out of Hollywood. Because he was saying even way back then that, I forget the exact quote, but the currency in Hollywood mm -hmm. is children's blood. Yeah. Well, Apparently, they even use, like, actual children's bl blood and stuff because it's, you know, life is in the blood. Yeah. So you have all those rich nutrients, biblically too, and just scientifically too. Yeah. You have all those nutrients, you have all that, uh, it, it's young, it's pure, it's strong, it's for growth. Well, let's dig into they that. They use that. Let's dig into that a little bit. They actually use that. Why is for abortion, why is abortion such a big deal? Yeah. Well, like, they, they yeah, use those parts. They make money on the actual abortion of killing the fetus, but that's not where they make their killing. They make the money off of the... So to speak, pun yeah, intended. Yeah. Financially, they make a killing by selling those parts yeah. for vaccines, for stem cell research, yeah, and all those kind of... A, a lot of anti-aging. Yeah, anti-aging young. junk. And, you know, there's like these old That's actors. It. Obviously, there's a lot of surgeries involved too, but, you know, sometimes you're amazed. You see an actor, he's 80. He looks like he's 65. Yeah. Like, what the heck? That can't just be surgery. So there's that conspiracy theory that they also use children's blood. Yeah. You know? And Mel Gibson was thought of as crazy when he was saying all this stuff. Yeah. Years later, this stuff's starting to come out that there's all these elites in Hollywood and the political uh, sphere and all that. Um, as pedophiles and, you know, child sacrifices and all that. And you're like, okay, maybe Mel Gibson isn't crazy. Right. You well, know, there's been more Hollywood actors that did come out about it. For example, I forget his name, Elijah something. Oh, Elijah Wood. Yeah. Who played Frodo uh, in Lord of the Rings, right? Yeah. Yeah. He talked about, Frodo, yeah. he talked about it himself that he's actually experienced it himself as a, a young person, yeah. a young child in Hollywood. Yeah, and there's this one other guy too. I forget. I forget his name. Yeah, the, the, there's a few out there, and you guys can look them up. But, anyways, it it it's real. It's happening. It's it's nuts. It so is. I'm gonna mention two things. One of them is Chrissy Teigen, John Legend's wife. There's tweets from years ago, messed up tweets like pedophilia like tweets. Yeah. Like, uh, I forget how they go, but like one of them was kind of like you know having sex with a child is like blah, blah, blah. I'm, I'm a bad girl or something like that. Like really, really dark, messed up tweets. And with this whole uh, Abstein and pedophilia stuff that went on this year, like there was a huge like outcry on pedophilia and child sex trafficking. People uh, screenshotted and reposted that and she started deleting thousands and thousands of tweets, you know, mm -hmm. trying to cover up her tracks. Yeah, that's But anyways... <laughs> One thing that I wanted to mention with, uh, it's, it's also in the fall of Cabal. It's Cabal, I guess, refers to like the elite, you know, but um, there was this 
I don't know if you heard of the Pizzagate scandal. You heard of it? Yeah, I, I think everyone's right? heard of it by now. So there's a... There's, I think it was a pizza parlor beside that one because they went and investigated that one and it was nothing. It was a pizza parlor beside that one somewhere a little down the road, like right beside. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure um, it's... Uh, that's, the, you know, this is right what I'm saying from what I remember. But um, apparently, it's, you know, it's located in Washington, D.C. It's very popular pizza pizza parlor. Obama has been there. Like all these senators and congressmen and women have been there. And it's like very, and you're like, okay, why, why the heck would Obama go to that pizza parlor? I mean, maybe they went there more than once. I don't know. Anyways, so, you know, doing the research and who owns it and what's, you know, there's like art pieces in there too. Like, dude, these art pieces are crazy. Like, art pieces like almost portraying like pedophilia, but not just pedophilia, like child torture. You know, like a lot of children, I think it's called Comet Ping Pong. Parlor, pizza parlor, Comet Ping Pong, art. Let yeah, see if you can pick some of that up, man. Because there's some some art pieces in there that are just like so disturbing. And there's one in the basement. Is that's this crazy. In, is this in Washington D.C.? Washington D.C. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's wa- wa- Washington D.C. Go to images. Oh. Uh. There's, there's one, dude, the, the connections that this, uh, that this lady does in this uh, fall of cabal is just absolutely crazy. Uh, I'm trying to look at one that's, maybe it's, maybe it's not, oh, look at that one on the right. Anyways. I, I don't know if the art piece that I'm thinking about is in, in this Comet Ping Pong place or in some but somebody prominence house. It's like it's like there's a group of boys that are like naked and there's like one boy being hung up in like a basement swimming like in a swimming indoor swimming pool type thing. And uh I don't know. Anyways. What I wanted to say with that is that the, the owner of this... Uh, this one looks weird. Yeah. They're very disturbing, dude. You guys got to watch that. Um, it's worth it, dude. Yeah. Like, you, we think we know what's happening. We don't. Police power. Anyways. Very the, disturbing. So the owner of that pizza parlor... Um. You know, if doing the research and stuff, they're like, you know, this lady was thinking like, you know, why is this guy? Oh, the owner of this pizza parlor, he was actually named one of the top 50 most influential people in Washington, D.C. The, right. o- the owner of a pizza parlor. That's great. That's weird. one of the most influential. That's weird. <laughs> That's weird. That's a red flag already. It's very bizarre. It's very bizarre. It's like there's all these senators and stuff. And this guy's one of the most influ- influential. So... What, who this guy actually is, he's actually a bastard child of one of the Rothschilds from really? Europe. Yeah. So there was this Rothschild in, in Europe. I f- forget what his name was, but he... I don't know if he got married and then divorced or was just out of wedlock mm-hmm. with some with some girl. Um, he had a, cu- a child. And... Uh, she ended up moving here with the child and stuff, or, or he just ended up moving here later. I don't know the backstory, but what I do know is that he's one of the, he's like the illegitimate bastard child of a Rothschild. That's crazy. So you're like, okay, kind of makes sense why this guy's so influential. Right. And he probably has, you know, if he, if he is involved with this pedophile ring, yeah, he's influential. Oh, yeah. You know, he's got a lot of dirt up for up these guys' sleeves, up the senators and the, you know, the presidents and whoever. Right. You know? So it's, 
it's kind of crazy. And then if you if you look at, you know, this documentary also goes into Hillary Clinton and the leaked emails and John Podesta and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. The whole leaked emails thing, I don't think it's because of Benghazi, bro. No. It's because of pedophilia and yeah. child sex trafficking. Oh. So they in 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 Hillary Clinton's leaked emails, they use certain words that uh are known and like confirmed by the FBI as being like pedophilia, child sex trafficking words. Like, right. Like for example, they'll use hot dog. Yeah. You know, or pizza. Pizza, I guess it's like a V shape or something that's referring to a, a girl and a hot dog is referring to a boy. Yeah. And uh, th- it depends like what you want on the hot dog or what you want on the pizza. Like a certain type of pizza is a certain, you know, a black girl or an Asian girl or uh, this type of girl, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, there's a lot, a lot of emails going back and forth between John Podesta, you know, the Hilton, the Hillary Clinton, uh, even Obama, and like just emails with like weird stuff like this. So one of them is is well to give a little bit of because some people think that's that whole pizza gate's absurd, it's not real and whatnot. I believe it, dude. If you you need to read these emails for yourself They're, to understand how yeah. just like weird it is. What the heck? What the are they way, talking about? The way they talk about the pizza and the hot dog yeah. and whatnot has absolutely nothing with going out to lunch. It has yeah. absolutely yeah. nothing with that. Like, I'm hungry and I feel like eating a hot dog today. Yeah. It has nothing to do with any of that. And it's like it's a just lot like, of emails like that. Not just, just like, like, hey, let's go out like the, the odd time. Let's go for a hot dog. Yeah. It's like the... the it's like constant the hot dog back and forth. The hot dog was moved to the new location. Yes. I'm not saying that's exactly what the but, wording but is But that there, type but of emails. Yeah. Or that like, type of wording. Or like the pizza's been moved into the other room. It's like... Yeah. So one of them that's actually like, you know, legit, legit email is that uh, I think it was Clinton to Obama or Obama to, to Hillary or something. They were saying like, you know, for the party tonight. I think I read this one too. It was like, I paid $56,000 for the pizza to come worth of pizza. Like $56,000 worth of pizza or something like that. It's like, what the heck? Yeah. For a party? I don't care how big that party is. You're not paying 56 grand for pizza. Yeah, that's insane. So that's, that piece, t- dude, those pizzas better be made of gold. We're talking <laughs> about potentially the highest office being involved with pedophilia or Obama or people that secretary of state held high, highest or offices. at least involved, not necessarily pedophiles, but at least involved, but potentially even pedophiles, Yeah, you know, which is absolutely mind boggling. And then you have someone like Trump who from the first day, he's like from the first day, I, you can even look it up. My administration is going to fight like full on against child sex trafficking and human sex trafficking. Like we're going to go full on against them. And if you actually look at the amount of sex trafficking arrests that Trump made versus Obama and all these other presidents, like if you look at a, a bar graph or something, like they're all relatively, you know, let's, let's say, I don't remember the numbers, like 5,000, like a couple thousand, two, three, four, five thousand. Trump is like way up at like, like the bar graph for Trump of how many sex trafficking and child sex trafficking arrests he made is like double, triple, quadruple these other presidents. Like he wasn't kidding when he said like, I'm going to, I'm going to hammer down on sex trafficking, you know? Yeah. So I think that's probably one of the main reasons why they're so against Trump. I'm not going to say that's the main reason or look at that. Yeah. Look at that. It says false there. Yeah. Yeah, of course it does. PolitiFact. Snopes. But, um, I mean, you can even look, I mean, I guess you you could look it up statistically yourself, you know, there you go. Yeah. Without the falseness. Right. From these so-called, these so-called. Uh, but apparently like, yeah, Trump has, has really 
has really brought the hammer down on that and he's always been you know clear about fighting against that he has yeah I, I, he's definitely mentioned but that. then you're like i think the conspiracy here is against trump mainly because of that because if this is exposed well there's so many aspects but this is definitely a big yes yeah, so many aspects but if this is exposed like they're screwed these guys go away for life for like obama clinton the senators, the these actors, they're done with. They're done. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, I'm saying if 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 it gets to that point. Yeah. That's why, and I think that's one of, this is a big reason why they're so, so against Trump. Yeah. Because these elites know. These elites yeah. know. For them, it's always been about covering up their, covering everything up behind them so they don't get caught. You no, know, because there's also people that are like, you know, that Trump, Trump was seen with Epstein too. Well, apparently, Epstein came at Mar-a-Lago, I think, one of Trump's resorts or something like that. And uh, when Trump found out who he was and whatnot, took him off to kick them out. <laughs> yeah, he, he, I think that's like a legit report or something that I read that he actually kicked him out. He's like, get this guy away. That's sick. Yeah. Whereas yeah. Clinton, there's like 20... 20 something times that Clinton flew with him. Yeah, with 20, like 26 or 28 or times. Yeah. It's a big number. What yeah. the? Like Jorgen says, he's never flown that many times with his mom. I've never, you know, there's aren't, I mean, I've never I, flown that many times, period. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, which, okay, yeah, they fly more. political, they, they fly a lot more. But, but you're flying the, with one specific together. person on his plane, on his private plane, that many times. Right. You know, that's yeah. crazy. That is crazy. So, you know, I don't think it was so much Benghazi with Clinton deleting right. the emails. Like, why would you delete the emails because of Benghazi? Okay, you messed up. Whatever. Yeah. There's something else. And that's where WikiLeaks came in and exposed that. Well, the other weird you thing know? about the whole WikiLeaks thing is with, um, what's his name? The guy who uh, owns it. Julian Assange? Julian Assange. For some reason, Trump's not a big fan of his. Yeah, I don't know. Which is weird. Maybe national security, he's, you know, because he's big on military. I don't Maybe. know. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe he's hiding something. I don't know. I doubt it. It would have came out. Yeah. I mean, I doubt he's hiding anything. It, it, like you said, it, it, it would have came out. It would have. If not, it will. Yeah. And that would have destroyed. I, and Assange definitely would have dropped it once he learned Trump's not a, bit, a big fan of his. Bro. If, if that's what the, was the issue. But these, these, these liberal dem Democrats, they would have done it i mean they tried to impeach him with nothing if they have something they would impeach them with something yeah but they don't have it yeah so i don't think it's there yeah, yeah no i agree yeah <clears throat> but uh that that's mind-boggling man i wish i wish we could see some of that like i wish i, I probably would have should have jotted down some emails or rewatched the fall of cabal like this week or something because there's some stuff in there that just blows you away yeah d uh you guys should definitely watch that. The Fall of Cabal. I'm partway through it. Um, like the connections that are made there are nuts. There's there's another crazy story. For some reason, my software that's recording um, the video is acting up at the moment. So I, it, I might not be able to get it on the YouTube. But Is it, is it frozen? The, the actual video? It, it or It seems so. It seems so. But What about when you upload it? Will it keep going? It should. I don't know. It's my first time doing it on this. So. Oh. Anyway, point being... Um, for those of you oh, who yeah, want to look into this, that. for those of you who want to look into this, go to, it's on the Huffington Post. You can look up congre congressional candidate in Virginia admits he's a pedophile. That's crazy, man. From HuffPost. Wow. Nathan Larson, and you could just Google this. I mean, this was so easy to find for me. Nathan Larson, a 37-year-old accountant from Charlottesville, Virginia, is running for Congress as an independent candidate in his native state. He is also a pedophile, as he admitted to HuffPost on Thursday, who was bragging in website posts about raping his late ex-wife. In a phone call, Larson confirmed that he created the now defunct websites, I don't know how to pronounce this one, S-U-I-P-E-D dot org, mm -hmm. and today. another weird one yeah it's on the it's on their uh on the article here 
chat rooms that served as gathering places for pedophiles and violence-minded misogynists like himself. HuffPost contacted Larson after confirming that his campaign website shared an IP address with these forums, among others. His sites were terminated by their domain host on Tuesday. On the phone, he was open about his pedophilia and seemingly unfazed about his long odds of attaining government office. Quote, A lot of people are tired of political correctness and being constrained by it. Quote, he said, Quote, People prefer when there's an outsider who doesn't have anything to lose and is willing to say what's on a lot of people's minds. On your mind. End quote. Wow. What's on a lot of people's minds right now is so you, you, need be to be, you need to be arrested and locked up yeah. for the rest of your life. Yeah. That's what's on a lot of people's Bro, minds right now. Um, it's, it's crazy. I'm thinking about... Like, how can someone like that run for office? And be tolerated. Right. I'm sure he's probably being investigated at this point. Probably. I mean, he, hopefully he admitted to raping his late ex-wife. So right. his wife's dead now, it seems like. But Dead or, or who knows? they divorced. So well, it's, when it's late, it refers to death, I think. But I'm just thinking, man. Or most recent. I'm just thinking, like, how does a nation get here? The ultimate, there you know? is something, there is something... In our world, I was going to say in our country, but it's just, it's in the whole world. That's like a disease, a plague that is plaguing everybody, especially those in places of power, especially those with a lot of money who have a lot of time to kill. Ultimately, what it is, is this sickness or disease called sin. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah, for sure. It's... Allowing Satan and his, and his know, minions, yeah, to influence you, whether you know it or not. Yeah, As everything that is seen behind everything that is seen, there's unseen. There's on. the unseen spiritual battle and warfare that's going on night and day. You know, like all this hatred and all this, um. All these, all this warfare, I guess you could say, against Trump, against good, against light. It's all coming from the spiritual world. The devil knows he doesn't have a lot of time, you know? Yeah. So it's like, bro, sometimes I'm like with this uh, congressman that you just, or this guy, that congressional candidate that was, that was running and he admitted to being a pedophile and he's open about it now. How, how do you get there, you know? 20 years ago, even being gay was like, whoa. Yeah. 10 years ago, it was still very resistant to for, for people, you know, to be like, oh, public, you know. Now it's like you're a hero if you're a transgender, if you change gender, if you're gay, if you're homosexual. Which it's, I, you're a hero I, Which now. I kind of get it from a societal standpoint because, like, you're standing up against the man, yeah. against society, against From a odds. societal man perspective sinful man perspective yeah you're like man yeah. you have courage now but, but, but you're I, having courage in the wrong way you're I having think, you're having courage doing the wrong thing yeah honestly it's it's like saying it's like saying the terrorists that attacked the twin they towers had courage on to 9 die 11, for, they, had, they had courage yeah they should be Which looked at they as did heroes. have courage but right. in the wrong but sense. it was evil it was evil for evil yeah it was 100 percent evil yeah it's like uh it's mind-boggling, bro. Now, today, the courage is to say, hey, I believe homosexuality is a sin and I don't agree with that lifestyle. That's actually right. courage because even conservatives, they're, they're tolerating that. They're like, okay, do, you know, you can live as a homosexual, whatever. Yeah. Which some people are still like, hey, no, marriage is between a man and a woman. And that's it. Right. The, the, well, know? there's a difference between my stance on it and hey, you can do whatever you yeah, want. For I'm sure. not, I, I'm, I'm not, not going to force you to to live how I live. Right. I'm entitled to my view and my opinion. Right. You know, but I'm not going to force you to live and think how I do. Right. But nor should you force me to accept to your accept ways. that. Like Look, I love you. 
I want you to be saved. I want the best for you. Like the whole bakery ordeal. Yeah. Like forcing me to make a cake yeah. for your That's wedding. That's forcing a business. Yeah. Business. Technically, a business can refuse service to anyone. Yeah. Technically, you know? I mean, obviously, what does capitals, capitalism do? You're going to fail if you res- if it's on something like, hey, you're black or you're white, so I'm not going to serve you. Or, I mean, homosexuality, maybe even that will fail in certain places of the country. For sure, you'll fail with your business. Yeah. You know? But uh, I was just thinking, man, like, the degradation in society and in this country has been just a slow and sure thing. You know, over the decades, just like just like our DNA, so to speak, how they yeah. how they've from the beginning, how everyone's it lived such a long time, and then slowly it started to degrade, degrade nine hundred to eight hundred to six hundred to four hundred to one hundred something, and then you're living to like seven eighty now. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know when they passed, uh, obviously during Obama's administration, uh, gay, the, you know, the gay marriage or something at the level of, at the national level. Yeah. For Supreme tax Court. purposes or yeah, whatever. Yeah, for Supreme Court. People argued that this is just the beginning. The nec- next will be transgenderism, pedophilia, and we saw that gay and homosexuality, you don't even hear about that anymore. Yeah. It's you not start, all you heard about after that was transgenderism, Eight, like the, the 72 genders, like gender moon spirit. That was I the can biggest be, thing. That, that was it. There was nothing to do with homosexuality anymore. Yeah. It just moved on. And actually I've heard like this homosexuals like, dude, we just want to live like in peace. We don't want this political. Obviously there's a good amount that, there are that some. do want that. Yeah. But there's gay people that are just like, hey, I just, I just want to live in peace. Like I don't yeah. want to get political. Just leave me alone. Yeah. Dave Rubin is one of them. Yeah. He's actually a conservative. If you've heard of Dave Rubin. Yeah. Yeah. So he's actually conservative now. He used to be like more liberal, but like he's, he's kind of changed. Well, that's happening with a lot of liberals. <laughs> like Milo Yiannopoulos. That's another one. Yeah. I haven't really heard, seen him on, on the, on the webs. Cause they've, they've so-called canceled him. Yeah. I haven't seen him on YouTube or anything cause they've canceled him. They've removed Cause he his... was a gay Jewish conservative quote unquote. He says Christian cause he's Catholic. So he's like, that's the most dangerous for the left because they can use nothing against me. I'm gay. Right. Uh, Jewish. I'm Jewish. I can't be anti-Semitic. I can't be, uh, you know, uh, homophobic. But, but what they do use on him is racist, which he's married yeah. to a black guy. Yeah. So <laughs> that's crazy, right? It's like, <laughs> he's like, yeah, I don't yeah. know, man. So because I'm tying it in with the whole pedophilia thing, you know, people said this is, this is, there's, this is just the beginning and it is. Yeah. Things will degrade more like well, I said under that. Trump. It's kind of been like, Hey, we, there was breaks put on. No one's thinking about transgenderism now and homosexuality. There's just so much going on with just Trump and politics that's out the door because not even Trump brings it up. Right. Obama would always bring it up and whatnot. Right. So I think once the Trump train is gone, hopefully in another four years, Dom Najuta, um, we're going to start to see it, you know, yeah, even pedophilia come up and oh for sure a push to legalize and say hey it's an orientation I Be- can't help it bestiality. Well, you know, you know, after they passed the, uh, you know, homosexuality and whatnot the, for the taxes and all that, there was a uh, apparently like protests like pedophi- pedophi- pedophiles. Yeah, coming to you know I'm watching and hey we're an orientation too we can't help it we're a sexual orientation just like right. the homos- so like where do you stop? Yeah. You know, where, where does it stop? Does that's it stop why, at bestiality? Does it stop? Like where? That's where... Necrophilia with, with, I think that's what it is, with dead people. Is that where it stops? Like where is the line? There's not There's not one. And there isn't. With sin, there is no line. There is no line. That's the thing. There's no line you can cross with yeah. sin. It just goes further and further. And look at where the elites are at. It's God's law and the rest is, there's no there's no limit for look the at, sin. Look at John DeCamp. You guys who are interested, look into John DeCamp and that whole story of what was happening. And this was in the early 1900s. I mean, uh, 1990s. Yeah. And that was like, it was completely sickening. Yeah. Dude. That's how far they went with sin because there's no line. Yeah. Imagine where it is today. See, God's law is solid. It's firm. It's never changing. That's the standard. You go outside of God's law, like you said, which is sin, 
and there's no limit there. There's no more line. There's no line. Murder, slander, yeah, cheating, stealing, adultery, fornication, homosexuality. There's just and and in each one of those aspects, you can go endless. Yeah, and you can you can go into the darkest areas of each of those locations yeah. with this. There's and. To be honest, in my opinion, I don't even think we can comprehend how far people can go can't. in those sins. But do you know what's scary? And Jordan Peterson, uh, I remember him saying stuff like this. Each of us is capable yeah. of doing that. Yeah. He's like, if we were living in the Nazi area, Nazi era, he's talking like to like, he's giving his speeches. I guarantee you almost all of us would be exactly, do exactly what the Nazis would have done. And did, I mean. As in the Nazis, as in the society. Yeah. Because you want to... Like, we, we would have turned in the Jews. Because you're wanting to save your own skin. Yeah. And Everyone's for themselves. Yeah. There were some good yes. Germans yes. that yes. helped. But, but majority, the majority of people, yeah. of quote-unquote good people, they'll, they'll turn in their neighbor. Yeah. Yeah. They'll do it at... Uh, they'll get to the point where they won't even regret look at, it. Look at California. Yeah. You know, they put out this thing, a $500 fine or whatever. No... Yeah, five hundred dollar fine if you if you like spot someone without a mask or something or what? Or no, they give you a five hundred dollar reward. I think if you report somebody who's left their business running, really, or, or if they uh, don't wear a mask. Is or this like recent that. or what? This was at the beginning. Oh, I, I know people got pissed. I don't know if it's still in effect it, or I, not. I don't know. I don't think it is. I don't. Probably not. They probably took it back. Yeah. But the fact that they went there. Yeah. They, they, te they tested how far they could control the public, bro. Yeah. This is all a test. Watch next time. Mm -hmm. That's what I was uh, t talking with Jonathan about at that one time. Yeah. Dude, but it's, uh, man, that's what I'm talking. Do you know what it says in the Bible, too? Because we said that sin has no limits, you know, and that we're, each of us is, has the potential and we're capable of, uh, of going there and going far. You know what? It, you know what I like that it says? Galatians 5, talking about the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, uh, long-suffering, patience, all this stuff. All, all the nine uh, aspects of the fruit of the Spirit. And it says at the end there, against these there is no law. Yeah. There's no law prohibiting me how much I can love. Right. There's no law prohibiting me how, how patient I can be. Right. There's no law prohibiting me how much self-control I exercise or how much peace I can have. There's no law against that. Right. That's crazy. Th that's limitless. Like sin in its, uh, you know, most evil form, there's, there's no limit how far you can go. It's, it's literally a, as far left as you can go or as far, or right. As far right as right. you can go. <laughs> so, but then obviously before God, there's absolutely a limit with sin and it's, you know, it's righteousness or sin. That's it. It's black yeah. and white. So I, I always found that intriguing and interesting. There's no law against these. Yeah. Nothing prohibits me, but, but, it, but there is a law prohibiting me from stealing or, yeah. or lying at least before God, or even in courts, actually from even man, you can't lie. Yeah. You know, you go in court, you can't lie. Right. They find you, you lie, you're done. Mm -hmm. So, there is a law against these things, against adultery, against uh, fornication. There's law before yeah. God. Sometimes it's taken away by man, but before God, there's law. For sure. You know, yeah. but before the fruit of the spirit, there's no law. It's amazing. It's limitless. Like and isn't love it, as much as you can. And isn't it crazy that this is kind of what's going through my brain right now. The ones who go onto the far left side, and I'm not talking politics. I'm talk I guess I'm going to just kind of spiritual or what? Yeah. Just get, use the analogy of liberals uh, and more conservative. No, no. Uh, we left were saying right. I can go as far okay. left as, or okay. as far right. Um, sin being, left. let's just say sin's going to be left. Of course you're going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nothing I know. to do political. Right. Right, right, right. But sin is left and um, righteousness is these, yeah, righteousness is right. What they'll do is what people will do is they'll take these ideologies on the right, which they like the ideas, you know, love, compassion, kindness, mm -hmm. self-control. And they'll corrupt them. And they'll use them as 
almost like a mask. Yeah. For the stuff all the way on the left. Like, like you have to love me. Sin. Which, which again, they manipulate that, the definition of those though, like love. Hey, you got to love me, which means you have to accept me. Right. Well, actually, biblically, before God, who is love, if I love you, I don't want you to go in eternal damnation right. forever, and I want to save you. So I'm going to tell you something that's going to hurt at the beginning, but it's going to free you. Right. You know? So that's actually love. Love for them is, no, you just accept me and whatever I want right. to do. Like I you said, know, it's, it's just like a mask to mask what they yeah. want but they make it sound like it's these things because, and what's crazy is a lot of people are just willing to go as far as they can into the sinful side where yeah. there, there's no limit at that. Why don't we go? But why, why is it so hard or why don't people go so far I know. into the other well, side? Because there's no line to cross there. Right. Isn't that crazy? Like imagine, Okay, so think of the most sickest, disgusting thing that you know that anyone's ever done in a sinful way. And then imagine what it would be like on the opposite side where it's just as far from, let's say, center. Center is like where you're neither okay. one. We're just as far on the other side from center. Of doing righteousness. Of doing righteousness. Of Do you know why? loving. Of exercising self-control of being patient of being kind imagine how far imagine what that would look like because it's kind of hard to name somebody who's there right it really is hard paul <laughs> jesus of course. jesus is ultimately the only yeah, one jesus and, is the only and one he is literally in the infinite on that side yeah. and then paul i mean you could go you know paul i have i have a verse that's really interesting um because this verse will kind of say why it's like that. Hebrews chapter two. And that is the way we battle these okay. sinful natures of our society by pushing towards this righteous sign. Yeah. So look what it says. Hebrews chapter two, verse one. And this will kind of uh, tie in with a point of, of like kind of answering that why, you know, therefore we must pay much closer attention to what we have heard lest we drift away from it. I want you to, you know, think about that, lest we drift drift away from it. Read it one more time. Therefore, we must pay much closer attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away from it. So chapter one of Hebrews is talking about, uh, it's comparing the angels with Christ and showing that Christ is above the angels because he's the one who created and he's the one who is righteous and his kingdom is forever. And it's a kingdom of righteousness and all this stuff. So it's exalting Christ above angels, you know? Right. So after you know who Christ is, it says we much, we must pay much closer attention to what we've heard about Christ, who he is, lest we drift away from it. I want you to think about lest we drift away from it. Like I remember like preparing a message on this, and it kind of gives, lest we drift away from it, kind of gives like, like let's say you're on ice. Like there's ice, you walk outside, you slip. You don't pay attention and you slip without even wanting to. It's very natural. It just, boom, it just happens, right? Yeah. Or take a piece of, literally take a piece of wood, throw it in a river, watch it drift away. There's no effort needed for me to slip on ice or for that piece of wood right. to drift down the river. There's no effort needed. Yeah. So that's the same thing with us as people, as humans. If I put in no effort and I just let myself be in a natural state, the natural state of man, and I put no effort, like you said, to push towards right, right, righteousness, I will naturally drift into sin. Without, like I don't have to go seeking sin. Right. I don't have to go seek to murder or seek to fornicate or seek to steal. I just have to naturally not do anything and I'll end up in sin. Doesn't mean that I will fornicate or do these great things, great sins, I mean, but I will end up in sin and living in sin naturally. Yeah, because that's it, the flesh. It is our flesh. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was That's say. the flesh of man. It's, it's sadly the original state of, well, not the original, the original God created us to be perfect and with him, but 
because of the initial sin, that's yeah. that has become our initial uh, yeah, our nature, state our nature, and nature yeah. of yeah. who we are. And yeah. so it, it's something that you have to battle against. Yeah. Not something that you can just be like, well, I'm just not. I'm not doing do this anything. big thing. I'm not fornicating. I'm not, uh, you know, getting drunk. I'm not doing drugs. Yeah. Yeah. But that's not what all that sin is, right? And before you know it, you get trapped into this, like, you're really far down you're, that river yeah. to the you, left. You still might not do some crazy stuff, but man, you have your relationship with, you're but far it's from also, God. But it's also possible. But when you're in that state, very far yeah, down that. when you're in that state, more than likely you can go down even further with other things, you know? Yeah. So like jump in a river, you'll float down. No problem. Swim up. That's tough. Yeah. You know, to swim up, you need to exercise, you need to fight, you need to eat healthy. You need to, that's discipline. But, discipline. but here's the best news. We have something called Christ. Not something, and someone. Someone called Christ. And he's anchored at the end right. of the river. I, I love at that. At the beginning of the river. Where and the river starts. And he's throwing a rope down us. All you need and to do is grab it. Dude, I love what you just said. All you need to do is <laughs> grab it and he'll pull you right in. He no will need, pull you. No need to swim. Yeah. You just hold on and you he let pulls him, you in. You let him do it. Let him pull you in. You just have to want to. You have to desire it. You have to, yeah. I mean, because there's also a responsibility. You Grab have, that you know? rope. Let him pull you in. Yeah. We'll end on that. All right. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And uh, we'll see you guys on the on the next one. Peace out. <laughs>